Diane and Shanana. I'm here at Ginger Cove Retirement Community Center in Annapolis, Maryland with Annie Zava, daughter of 26J Von Vera, who was her brother, father, father, I'm sorry, father, husband. And um, I know that you have a lot of information that you've learned about his military years. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you if you can tell me where he was born. I think he was born in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. All right. And um, his parents? His parents, um, Charles. And his father was Charles. Francesco. Oh. Francesco um, Bombera. And he was born in Torino, Italy, in the northern part of Italy, where they make the Fiat cars. Okay. And he came over here. And living in New York all my life, I also everybody that came from another country came to New York. And we were at Ellis Island and so forth and so on. So I was not really, we went on as explored and that was at the Ellis Island. But I just wondered, where, you know, I wonder if anything was about, I couldn't find anything. Then came to find out, or came to realize, that my grandmother, Mary Charles, uh, that was not an Italian name, so how did my Italian grandfather from Italy marry a Mary Trout, who was definitely not Italian? But he came to Pennsylvania. He was, came from Italy to Pennsylvania and uh, lived in the Pennsylvania Dutch area. And, uh, and that's how we met Mary Trout, and they came from Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. that solved a few that's problems of the, in recent years. Now, what were his parents' occupations? I, don't, I think his mother did not work, okay. and his father had something to do with a wine exporting business. Uh, I don't know. They certainly talked about the, uh, olive oil and wine and so forth, but what else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> So I and think he, he, did he have siblings, brothers and sisters? He did. He had an oldest sister. His sister was older than he was. That was Kosova. That was my famous Aunt Kelly, who had the greatest sense of humor in the world. And then we had another younger sister. The next youngest one was Emma. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was Gertrude. And the youngest was uh, Alpha. And uh, he was much younger. I mean, he never wrote any letters. All of his sisters wrote letters. Uh, after... Now, when you say wrote letters, wrote letters to your... To, to him. Okay, when he, when was, he in was in France. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, did any of his brothers, or did his brother or sister serve in the military at any time? His brother, his youngest brother, served in World War One. Okay. And uh, he survived World War One. Okay. And he was our favorite uncle because when he would come to visit us, uh, I, when I, I had an older sister, and we were maybe in our... 8, 10, whatever, and he would sit on the couch in the living room. He wasn't working. He was about doing this at the coffee shop where we were sitting here, you know, and he wasn't working. He didn't have a job, so he would come and visit my mother and father and, and, and his nieces and nephews, his nieces, and uh, he would sit on the couch next to us, and we'd have a pad and paper, and he would say, oh, now, what do you want me to draw? And we'd pick out all the Disney figures, and we'd make Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, and we'd learn mountains and all kinds of little animals that yeah. you could play with the bird. And he was, he was a fearless, fearless man. Francis joined the military. Was he drafted? Well, we, we, can't, we just went through that, and we said that he would volunteer. He volunteered. Okay. Yeah. And do you know what year that was? Um, 1918. Okay. And what branch of the military did he serve? He was in the artillery. Okay. Um, that's Army? Yes, that's Army Artillery. Just to clarify yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did his, how old was he when he joined? 20. He was 20. How did his parents feel about that? Do you have any knowledge his of that? His father actually passed away two years before he went into the service. Okay. So when he left, he was he was like he was like the head of the family, even mm -hmm. though he was not the eldest. He was the man of the family, and uh, so it was very hard. And he sent a lot of the letters that he sent. Uh, eventually, he he sent 
several in the beginning, which are, were the ones that I was reading last night, that are stolen. You know, you, I don't get any letters from you. What's the matter with the bag? You have plenty of time. It's not the mail is not is not being delivered. It's just that you're not writing, and you want enough of you to be able to write. You stole the Emma particularly, and uh, and then he uh, in subsequent letter he had apologized for being so hard on okay. him and so forth and so on. And every successive letter or ten letters that I saved and so forth were just at random, and uh, he was getting mail from them and packages. So How did it impact the family? He was the head of the household. His dad had passed. He he was the oldest. I'm sure everybody depended on him. Did, did they ever talk about how that impacted their lives after no, that? No, they never talked about it. And uh, even even when my aunts were older, they do you have water? And he didn't talk very much about it. Okay. As we were kids growing up at uh, Cape Cotillo, my Aunt Tilly lived around the corner from where we lived in um, on Long Island in Virginia, near Valley Spring, Long Island. Mm -hmm. And my, my Aunt Barbara had just bought a house and they lived just two blocks away from uh, from his sister. And we were over there a lot. And um, But they never talked about it. They, it was like a closed character. Okay. They never talked my father did when we were younger, okay. and he would remember him talking about certain, in fact, I was reading one of the letters, and he was talking about the city that he was in, Estelvia, and I turned back to me, oh my God, I can remember him mentioning Estelvia. <laughs> <laughs> now, did he complete um, primary and secondary school, your father? He went to primary school, uh -huh. but he used to tell, uh, now, he, I don't know how many jobs he ever was interviewed for or whatever, but he used to tell people that his high school was burned down and all his records burned down. <laughs> However, the funny part of it is in subsequent letters that I was reading, um, he mentioned that he was happy that Emma had gotten a new job and the promotion and the raise, and he said, I'm glad to hear that because when I come home, I probably won't have much money, and so I'll be the head of the house and you can be the breadwinner. <laughs> And so forth. He said, I hope the city of New York remembers that they had hired me. Now, he worked for the city of New York. Prior to his enlistment? Prior to his enlistment okay. and whatever department. I don't know. He didn't mention it. Okay. But he just hoped that when he went back <coughs> that the job would be there. Sure. And he went back, and the job was there in whatever capacity. He was very bright in spite of the fact that he never graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. So whatever department he was working in, he worked his way up to uh, the head of the tort division, which was if people sue the city, if they fell and hurt themselves or any kind of injury where people would sue the city, it was taken care of in his department. Okay. And he worked in that department, and then he became head of that department. And uh, he had lawyers working for wow. him, young lawyers working for him. And one thing I always came home and he said, some of these fellows, I don't know what they teach them in law school, but they sure take a decent interview when they come through this and so forth and so on. So many times my father would wind up find himself in court. Right, you know, right. Standing up to the city of So New he York. really did well. And that's the job he retired from uh -huh. when he retired. He, and he was young enough when he retired that he enjoyed being home for a while. And um, But he was bright and he wanted to do something. He was active. And uh, we, were, we were grown by that time in, in high school or maybe out of high school. And um, uh, he got a job with a bank. Okay. And he started as a stock boy. And he organized the stock division and so forth. Not S-T-O-C-K, but stock in boxes and things oh, like okay. that. Yeah, <laughs> different. Uh, but he organized this basement stock or whatever and so forth and so on. And I guess they still caught on that he's kind of a sharp guy. Mm -hmm. And so they asked him to do another job, and he did that very well. And before he retired from that job, 
she was doing spreadsheets for the bank and so forth and so on. Sounds like he was very intelligent. He was bright. He was very bright. Why do you think she joined? I don't know. Was it was was it? I think a lot of his friends were going in as well. He went in. He was the first when he was living in Brooklyn. He was went to Fort Hamilton, which was like the place where they went. Yeah, where his basic training was. Well, he he said that that's where they got the training, but he sort of, uh, in one of the letters, said they didn't do much at Fort Hamilton. You should see what we're doing now, which was meaning hiking and pushing. I guess they went to heavy artillery and uh, so forth. So uh, he, that's where he got his training, and I think there were a lot of his friends who were joining up, and I think probably that's the reason he joined up. Okay. Yeah. So did you say anything else about his basic training, any of his highlights of that, or ever no, talked about no, it? No, 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 not okay. at all. And he said that they went over by ship, and he said he was a little concerned about that because he didn't know where now, he would when be. When you say over by ship, where did you go exactly? To France. To France, okay. France. yeah. And uh, went over, I guess, with a lot of his friends and so forth and so on. His, his trip was very calm. The water was calm. So he was very proud to say that he never got seasick. And he says, and we were lucky because there were three of us, and we got a cabin, a stateroom that the travelers had used mm-hmm. and so forth, and they were able to have beds. And he said a lot of the guys slept in hammocks. Right, as you <laughs> said, that must have been quite an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, he said, they, said they felt very lucky with that. Of your rides in France? Yes. Okay. Because everything, all of those letters were written in 1918. Okay. So I don't okay. think he spent any other time. Did I hear you say um, earlier that he was one year in, in the military? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Just the, all the letters were 1918. Okay. 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 Um, how long did he spend in France? Was it a matter of months or? It was, the, I think that he was there the whole time. The entire year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He talked about the French being very nice to them and very uh, uh, helpful and friendly and warm and so forth. And he said they they don't even realize that the war is still going on. They're just so used to living in war conditions that mm-hmm. it became like second nature to right, them. Right. Yeah. So his basics? Just, just that. Apparently, just right over there, they got right into the thick of it. Okay. And so he did the letters indicate that he was in combat there? He said, if you don't hear from me for a while, he said, we're going up to the front. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, go ahead. We're going up to the front. And he said, I might not be able to write. So don't worry. And I will write, you know, as soon as I can and so forth and so on. I'm allergic to Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> So many trees in Annapolis. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So no, he they got they got over there and they got right into the thick of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did he talk about any um, anything in particular about those you know battles or being on the front lines or did yeah, he mention that in the letters at yeah, all? Yes. At one time he said something and we I think he only said it once and we sort of remembered it and we never went and so forth and he never liked cabbage because I think my comrades wound up bringing home the cabbage field. And that that stuck with him. Right. That stuck with him. He mentioned it and that was and we were like horrified and grief right. stricken so we knew enough not to mention it again. Sure. But he said some I guess he said some bad stuff. Sure. Yeah. How about friends? Does he mention any friends oh, or relationships that he, he had? Yes, I guess one of the fellows that he was in sort of basic training with uh, and went over with, he was with them. And uh, so, you know, he, he didn't feel like he was totally alone and didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, did he ever talk about uh, or, or did he ever maintain friendships with some of the men that he served with? He probably did because every month, uh, the first Monday of every month, the um, there was a building in Brooklyn, and I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was meetings of uh, the the people who had been in the war. Okay. Uh, he would know. I mean, we wouldn't have anything special 
to them because daddy wasn't the best son or the youth pastor. Wouldn't be home for dinner. He was going to the the veterans meeting or whatever it was. And we did that faithfully every Doesn't time. Doesn't that make sense sometimes? But he did, yes, okay. yes. And the man who uh, I mentioned who received confirmation and the sponsor was Jack Gillespie. And I've heard that name mentioned many times, so he kept in touch with him. Mm -hmm. Now, who is Jack Gillespie? It was a friend. Okay. A friend. A friend. Uh, we became basic friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they did keep them together, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he never talked about anybody being killed. Talk about at night, everything was dark. Uh, and he, he didn't, he mentioned in one of the letters that uh, I know that there is mail waiting for me, but if there's not a full moon tonight, I will have to wait until tomorrow to read it because there's no light for half night. Okay. Yeah. So that was yeah. one of those more vivid memories. Uh, he sounds like he had several. Yeah. 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 Um, did he talk about being promoted at all or on any special missions at all? No, no. Okay. I think he was a perennial surprise or when he came out as a private. Okay. Yeah. Did he earn any um, medals while he served? No, but he did have some service medals. Okay. And uh, I had, I gave some of the service medals to my grandson. He loved them, and, oh, and they were framed. And so uh, he was asked if I liked them or not, if he still has them. <laughs> and I'll ask my daughter, does Nick still have Grandpa or was his stepfather, his stepfather, step-grandfather? Um, yeah, he still has the medals that were... I have a dog tag. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do. I do. And it's funny, I had them in my kitchen in the door with all the silverware. And about a month ago, I said to myself, let me take these out and see if I can shine them up and make them look good. Maybe I can have a set of chains and, you know, wear them and so forth and so on. Well, they were not made of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so they didn't shine up or anything. Yeah. They just, legs just looked the same. Um, did schoolers okay. or to you folks, or was there gaps in time? I mean, what was the communication like back then? Well, I think they, I think they all, I think that finally, after he was there and he wasn't getting mail and he kind of felt home, you know, like sort of stolen then. Mm -hmm. And then he apologized and then wrote a letter and so forth. And then the letters were wonderful. They were signed and so forth and so on. And then they were sending things that, you know, they they shouldn't have been sending. And he said, don't send me anything. He said, we can only ask for something. If we ask for something, we put in a petition for it. And then we can send that and they will accept it. Mm -hmm. But if they send, what you say, they sent stuff from Wanamaker's. Do you know Wanamaker's Chick Cafe? Well, that was a big, they had a Wanamaker's in Chicago. And they had a big one in New York and so on and so forth. So apparently they sent him something from Wanamaker's. So what kinds of things were they saying that they weren't allowed to then? Well, I don't know what he, what, whatever was in the Wanamaker package. He did ask for uh, a sewing kit. Okay. One of the sewing kits. I think he said in one of the letters that he had put on some weight and so forth. And maybe he had to move the buttons over or whatever. <laughs> well, he didn't, it didn't help him very much to learn to sew or anything because with, as he was, as he was my father, if there was anything that had to be sewed, it was my mother was a sweet big sewer either. So I had taken sewing lessons and when anything needed to be a button sewn on, he would just fold it nicely and put it on the stairs for you know, when you're going upstairs to well, need some buttons or something like that. <laughs> so that and cigarettes. And um, I don't know that he asked for anything else. I think it was the cigarettes and oh he he asked for some kind of uh, I don't think it was chewing tobacco, but it was some kind of a cigar thing or whatever. Did he thing. ever mention the food there or what? No. No, I don't complain about what the food. they were selling and no. what the facility no, saw no. during that wartime and combat? He couldn't complain. He was, and he wasn't a complaining father, I can remember. He, you know, it was, whatever went on, it was like fine with him. He had a really smooth disposition mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, he was a little aside story, uh, Craig was giving me a little insight into what kind of a person he was. He was he was healthy. He was a very healthy person. I can I I took that gene from him. Uh, and if he didn't 
Australia, we had a talk or a poll or something and Jill from the Nursing Home or Motherwell was saying, like, you're afraid of the doctor part, you know, not feeling well. And he said, I'm afraid I might feel better. And so he got better and then he never had a bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> but he had this throat cancer and they removed the tumor and they gave him radiation. And I think he lived two years after that. And he was fine. And some say they moved the throat back and that's where they got him. They did not do that. And he had no pain. He would be fine. But he was beginning to lose weight. And my sister and I could see that he was, although he never complained, mm -hmm. and uh, he never he never dated himself, he said this, but uh, my sister and I talked about it. And uh, we decided that he should see the doctor. And so uh, I made an appointment for the doctor. Now, my husband and I were out doing errands. And I took the next stop by the house, and I said, I'll call Pat, but um, we have an appointment with the doctor tomorrow, and she might not pay. So anyway, um, we talked, we, my husband and I talked, and we thought it was the right solution. I can make my best grilled cheese when I drink. So anyway, he lived independently. I mean, my sister and I, I was married then, by then, and I had moved out, but my sister was home. And she, I mean, she would make him his dinner, you know, herself and him and so forth. But he took care of himself. <laughs> so uh, he, um, uh, and I interrupted myself. He was, so I was going to tell him he had an appointment with the doctor. So I said, Pat, I have an appointment for you to see the doctor tomorrow, okay? And he said, yeah, that's okay. And when we walked in, we said, hi, how you doing? He said, good. He says, I'm having my lunch. He says, <laughs> how you feel? He says, I feel great. He says, I feel better than I have in a long time. And we said, well, that's good. I said, and, that, and you have an appointment with the doctor anyway, <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll just find out, you know, whatever, so forth. So we said, okay. And that night he called me and he said, no, I didn't write it on my calendar. It was the next day. But I didn't write it on my calendar, so I just want to put what time are you going to pick me up and so forth and so on. So uh, uh, I told him to call me and so forth and so on. The next day, my sister went, my, house, my sister was an elementary school principal. And she uh, would have her little routine. Uh, she would go up and come down and have her breakfast, and then she'd go up and get flowers and dress and so forth and so on. He closed the door, his closest bedroom door, and uh, he was sound asleep and so forth. And then she came down the next morning and uh, ready and all ready to go off to school, and she opened the door, and he was in the same position he died. Oh. In his sleep. Mm -hmm. That's the way he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Most of my buttons are still full of spaghetti and so forth and so on. But I, I look around and see people passed away every day, babies, and they're not dead. Right. I don't think he was replaced. But I, I think it was kind of hard to replace because I didn't want to walk around, you know, with bad knees. And I had some degenerative discs in my back. I got that from sitting on a plane too long. <laughs> <laughs> so I should, I should complain. No, your your father had no uh, service related injuries no. or no. okay, no. and even as he got older, there was nothing related to his military no. service except the smoking, which he did before he went right. into the service. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So about his experience there, I understand you have saved letters and documents. I do. And did you want to talk about those a little bit? I would bit? love to, yes. I would love to show you what I have. And I, I will show you the carryover from, you know, like what time you're picking me up today to the bank where I put it on the calendar to every letter that he wrote, he wrote the number of page on the front and the back. And he started in the beginning to write letter number one and letter number two. And I think he forgot it after a while. So now I have a whole list. Oh, it's here. I think there might be my stuff in that box. The ones that I read last night and the night before. And these were the original ten that I that they had asked about. And these I put together. Uh, Beth Thomas, I don't know whether you know Beth. Uh, she, uh, when I told her, 
she took us to the Lord and talked to me about heaven. I was right upstairs and I got so right with God and I walked him down to the bathroom so I can ask God to come and say, Oh, she said, You made my day, you made my day. I think she was just saying that they would not be enough people to get to hear. Okay, so here's this is Clotilda. Let's turn the mic off so I can talk. So this is Clotilda. Uh -huh. And that's my father. And that's Emma. And that's Joseph. And I don't know whether where the little Frankie uh, uh, Alfred was, but he wasn't in that picture. <laughs> but this is this is one where he this is could be him being held by one of the other girls. And that's the whole family. And here he is graduating from whatever school he graduated from. Mm -hmm. Big old boy. Growing up, there wasn't a person in the world that didn't say to you, "Look just like your father." And I say to myself, I used to say to myself, "I don't want to look like a man. I don't want to look like a man." <laughs> but anyway, I did grow his dreams. Unfortunately, my mother and sister both had Alzheimer's, so I got my father's dreams for the January first. Oh, I didn't know that. So, and, and so these, did you get the CDs? His mother, Mary, very proud of putting on the bag. He asked for, for pictures to be sent from the family. First time photo. Yeah. And this was his mother with the flag. She had that on her. My father was a real flag, big flag person. The picture says it all so nice. Yeah. Oh, and this was. This was a little picnic card that the children had given him to send home, and there's a message on the back that you can read. <laughs> oh, that's a little card. Yeah. Do you have a CD? I don't have his um, obituary, and I don't have his tombstone. Now, how old, how old was he when he passed? He was 88. Okay. I think he was 88. Yeah. Letters that I have <coughs> picked out for fame. Because I thought they were in pretty good shape. But as I read some of these, these are not in bad shape. Would you like me to read one? Sure. Okay. This is an interesting one here. To read, then summon these, which were all written in pencil. Okay. So these are a little bit harder to read, and it might be that these would, they are, these aren't the ones that I have shown, but they are in good condition. Mm -hmm. they're in there. Dear Emma, we received your letter. Emma was the one we didn't like very much. Dear Emma, we received your letter yesterday and was very glad to hear from you. I hardly had time to read your letter as it was very busy. I was packing up, preparing to leave for the front. We all took a trip to the bathhouse about five miles away and got our hot bath. Uh, we took for a bathhouse. There's one left. I don't understand that. Wait a minute. They are reading aloud. There were also a massacre, a massacre of cute little cooties and very common species of this part of the very common species of this part of the country. Uh. 
something about I don't like that. There's something about the bathhouse where one there was one left on the and very recently when they rent made it too hot for them. Uh, somebody probably drowned. They probably left it. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I have that and clean for for the paddock uh, among them, but still they are very elusive little animals. He was from the Hanoi. Yeah, something about the, some of the conditions that he. Oh yeah, yeah. He grew up through yeah. when they fell yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. And, and not make a big deal of it. Right. Just, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, 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 a couple of lines in a letter. I was very sorry to hear of a young girl in your place losing her husband. Uh, you certainly should seem to admire uh, the kind boy and wife or two family who taught them quite a bit of comment on them ourselves. I read with great interest of the boys of the bogus Chateau Sierra. I suppose there will be uh, an overflow of them when we all get back from here. Something very delicate, some incident during the war. One of the fellows in every battery, in my battery, I have found out six deadly travelers, worked, worked in the Travelers New York office. This my Aunt Emma married the president of the Travelers, Travelers Insurance Company. His name is Wright, but I don't suppose you know him. He handles the mail and asks leave. epidemic seems to be pretty bad in the states from uh, reports I have seen where he can meet um, we, we are leaving the front and I suppose we go to some rest camp this doesn't sound like a travel but anyway, you get sort of an idea of sure, what they're sharing. Yeah, yeah. What was happening yeah. over there? And he was very, very uh, precise about about numbering them. See, this is uh, this is page two, and this is page three. These are most of them. These were the original ones I picked out, and you can see. But, but later on, they got to be just some kind of a change or something because they were written much better, much better. And maybe these will be the ones to to take, not the ones that are. This is what they had to do. They had to like. Here's the, the please send me the following articles. One pair of special puttees. Two writing tablets. One spelling set. And then he had to put his name. Um, um, private first class, battery D, 59th artillery. That's what his, what his first name was. And then the captain signed it. So that's mm -hmm. what they needed. They want to use do you know I don't know if that's something you can talk to them about oh, okay I always said that they could they would get that I'm not sure yeah, yeah, in the hand well, thank you everybody Here. Um, let me pass around. I think these are the puttees or something. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Let's see here. 
хотел вот так спуститься, да, ну, да, вроде там марш еще. Еще старый пейзер первый, Кучьяра Лесницкая. Она чуткан вишнай бай арва хай вишнай шу кайти. Take pictures and see if there were flags being flown, and every year we got our commendations from 
too much to order. I am no, trying to decide the that I am just so happy to yeah. invest in that happy area to have somebody watch it because I just give up on the whole idea of that happy area shopping. And especially the happy area parking. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking the time today. Oh. It's been an honor to sit with you and hear about your father. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure for me. And I, I'm really, really happy for you that you were able to, to share this yes. and that it is going through. Um, it's going through my great, site. And we would be Congress. thrilled. <laughs> right, right. We would be thrilled. Yeah. So this is a great way but to honor him. Sure it's a I don't know whether you're volunteers or you're employees, but wherever you are, you're doing a wonderful job. I'm going to make a lot of people very Thank happy. You. My Thank neighbor you. is here on behalf of her uncle, and she's just sort of pulled stuff together. I mean, she, I had this stuff for a long time, and we used to worry about where it was going to go mm -hmm. and what was going to happen mm -hmm. to it. But uh, she gathered some stuff together, and she was so happy to bring that up. And uh, she was, in fact, I called her. She lives on my floor, and I called her and I said, Peggy, I'm so glad. I said, Peggy, we're going to have to dance together. I wanted to come early. I wanted to copy her uh, uh, World War, this, um, Civil War President over here. And uh, so I called her. She was gone, and I could not. She was sitting here, and I said, I said, you made it before I did, and I came <laughs> early. <laughs> not that we were anxious. But anyway, so thank you so much. Well, thank you. Me. Like I said, um, you you've have really honored him today. <laughs> And we are very appreciative, and the information is very, well, very valuable. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. And, and you could be, too. 